Um, God really wants to encourage us today. Amen. As, um, as I was listening to the prayers, Brother Pastor Titus was praying, and um, he was praying for some of the saints. You know, some are getting weary. But as he said in the prayer, this is not a time to get weary. This is not a time to get weary. These are serious times. It is serious times for those who are already born again and for those who are not born again. God needs everyone's attention this morning. He needs everyone's attention, the saved and the unsaved. These are troublesome times, troublesome times, trials, um, all kind of stuff is in the earth. Um, violence, uh, division, but God is also here. Amen. And we look to and depend on him. But I, I, I want to say, um, especially to those of you who may be watching who have, um, have been privy to the truth of God's word for a long time, but you have not yet surrendered to him. I really need you to hear this morning. We don't know where death is. And we don't know how long God is going to um, extend his mercy and extend his arm of salvation to us. And... Um, I would really just caution all of us. It is time to stop playing with your soul. It is time to get serious about why you're on this earth. Why are you here? Why did God allow you to be born? It is time to turn your focus to your soul. Amen? That's what time it is for the saved and the unsaved. If you're saved and if you're right, you need to stay right. And if you're saved and you're in sin, you need to come out of sin. And if you're not born again, it's time to seek God for salvation. Amen? Amen? Because God has declared some things in his word. Open your Bibles, if you will. We're going to uh, look at salvation this morning. And we're going to look at the, the repentance aspect of it. Because um, if we're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven, you can only gain entry by repenting. Amen. Jesus started saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. On the day of Pentecost, Peter taught a message and the people asked him upon completion of that message, what must we do to be saved? And he said, repent. We must repent. If we want eternal life if we want to live forever with God then we must turn our focus amen to the word of God and we must take to heart what he has said um, <clears throat> let's open our Bibles I think we'll start um, Look at uh, the book of Acts. 
We're going to be very practical this morning. Amen. Is that all right? The book of Acts. Let's look at Acts, the 17th chapter. Acts 17. And uh, <clears throat> this is the Apostle Paul preaching in Athens. Let's look down. Um, <clears throat> my God. Okay. We'll start at verse. Um, We'll start at 26. Now, this is Paul, who, the Apostle Paul, who came upon some uh, men in Athens who was worshiping the unknown God. So he took time to proclaim who God was to them. <clears throat> All right. And um, we'll start at 26. He says, um, and he hath made of one blood, talking about God. He has made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek who? That they should seek the Lord. Now this is, this is, this is Paul declaring God's heart that they should seek the Lord if haply they might feel after him and what find him though he be not far from every one of us. Amen. That's one thing I love about God. Amen. He's not hard to find. God is not going to tell men to come to him for salvation and then make that a difficult thing. So Paul says, for in him, we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto what gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. So Paul is telling us how we are to think about God. All right. We're not to think that he um, is, is, is like some graven image, some God that we can shape a false idol that we can shape. Amen. And God is not even like the idols we form in our imagination because today we may not be um, fashioning uh, a statue and sitting it up and worshiping it, but we create idols in our mind. We have false gods in our mind because many people hold a false view of God. And when you don't want real God, amen, Satan will uh, tempt you to form a false God in your imagination. Now look what Paul says in verse 30. All right. He says in the times of this ignorance, God did what he winked at. Okay. But now he commands all men to do what God say the scripture say he, God commands. Okay. He commands all to what? To repent. Okay. It is a command, not a suggestion. Okay. God says there was a time I wink, wink, winked at man's ignorance, but now I command all men everywhere to repent. And this is why look at verse 31. Because he hath, the he is God, he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge, what? The world. Okay? God is going to judge the world. He has a day appointed that he is going to judge the world in righteousness 
by that man whom he hath ordained. And we know that that man is none other than Jesus Christ. Okay, so God says he has appointed a day and he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath, appoint, uh, hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. So he's saying, okay, I'm going to judge the world in righteousness. One day I have a day appointed, okay, and I have given you credible proof of that in that many, 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 many years ago, I raised Jesus Christ from the dead. All right. So I raised Jesus Christ from the dead, my son. So that is credible proof. You can believe me that there is a day coming when I'm going to judge this world meaning all people, he's going to judge this world by his son, Jesus Christ. All right? And he says the proof of that is the fact that I got him up out of the grave. Amen? So that's why we need to have an urgency in us to get right with God because this world is temporal. All right? We won't be here always. This world is temporal, and God says that I have appointed a day, all right, in which I'm going to judge this world. So I want us to see something here. Um, remember uh, a few weeks ago, Pastor Tierra did a lesson. I want to put our lifeline up here. Pastor Tierra did a lesson. And remember now, this represents our birth or our entry into the world. And this represents what? Our death. Because if you are not raptured, you will die. Amen. Because God said it is appointed unto men once to die. And after death, what? After death, the judgment. All right. And he also told us there's some things in the scripture that God has told us about our time here on this earth. He told us it's temporary. OK, it's temporal. All right. We are here for a season. He told us to consider our life here a vapor. All right. You could be here today and gone today. All right. So. Um, when we were born into time, all right, we were born into time, all right? So now I want us to see something. When we came into time, all right, we were born in the midst of God's story or his plan, okay? We were born in the middle of God's plan. All right. Remember, Tara Ter went over that a couple of weeks, few weeks back. We were born in the middle of God's plan. All right. So from birth to death. All right. Whether God gives me 40 years here, 10 years here, 30 years here. OK. My time here is temporal. But while I'm here. There's something God wants from me. There's something that God wants from every human being. All right. So now since we were not here, we were born in somewhere, let's say the middle of this plan. All right. So since we were not here at the beginning. All right. But it is possible for me to go back and read the beginning. And it's called the word of God. Amen. It's called the word of God. All right. So we have that responsibility. Amen. So there is, it's possible for me to know what it is God wants from me while I'm here. Those 30 or 40, 50, 60, 90 years that God gives me in time on this earth. It is possible for me to know his plan and purpose. Okay for my life and it's in the bible all right well i can go back to the beginning in genesis 
and discover that I'm a created being. Okay, I didn't evolve. I didn't come from a ape, a monkey, no Big Bang Theory. God has said he created heaven and earth, and God has said that he created man in his own image. Okay, so it is possible for me to know, although I was born um, in a plan that was already in progress, okay, I can go back, amen, because God's testimony has been documented. I can go back and discover what, what should be my focus while I'm on this earth. What should be my focus? What should be my number one priority? Okay. Where should my focus be um, while I'm here? Is my time here important? Are there any eternal consequences for what I do here? Okay. The Bible has all those answers. Okay. The Bible has all those answers. So that's why we always, we should always, amen, point men to the word of God. Okay. Point men to the word of God. So we know that the word of God says that um, it is God's will or his desire that nobody be lost. God does not desire for anyone to be lost, but we know that people choose every day. <clears throat> Amen to uh, not choose God. That's their choice. Amen. So we want to look today. We want to look very practical. <clears throat> okay. At now this man here is representing is representing the unsaved. All right. The unsaved. Now, remember, we've said in previous lessons, man is what body, soul and spirit. Okay, <clears throat> he has a human spirit in here. All right, if he's not born again, then he's void of the Holy Spirit. All right, but his soul and his spirit are his inward parts. And this part, this is the real him. Okay, but, but he has a body. That soul and that human spirit is housed in that body. All right. <clears throat> And the soul part of, of man, that's the part, that's the conscious part of us that will go on forever. Okay. That will go on forever. Now, soul is also synonymous with heart. When you see that in scripture. Okay. That's better. Okay. So heart and soul are synonymous in scripture. All right. Remember, Jesus said, out of the heart flow, <clears throat> sin flows out of the heart. Okay. He's not talking about that heart that beats in your chest. He's talking about that spiritual part of you, the, your inward parts. When, when the Bible refers to our inward parts, he's talking about our heart and, uh, I'm sorry, our soul and our spirit. Okay. Now, uh, we don't know. We, we just know this comprises the inner man. Only God can separate them. So we don't have to worry about separating them. He said, only I can separate them. Just know that they're inside you. Amen. They're inside your being. All right. So now the scripture tells us in, I believe it's Romans 10, 10, that if a man is going to be saved, <coughs> The heart must believe all the way to righteousness. Okay. Right. The heart must believe all the way to righteousness. That's one thing about God. He always takes a man inward. He takes us inward because that's where the real issue is. That's where the real issue is. This soul controls this body. This is where our decisions are made. This is where choices are made. Decisions and choices and thoughts are formed, amen, in the heart, in the soul. So that soul, whatever that soul decides to do, that's what the body is going to do. Okay? The, the body 
has no power of its own. You take the soul out of the body, the body is dead. All right. As we see at funerals, that soul and spirit have left that body. That body can do nothing. All right. So that soul part of us, that inward part, that's the real us. That is the decision maker. Now, we know that in the fall, in the fall, when Adam and Eve sinned, OK, that was called the fall. We know that this entire man, OK, the entire man. All right. Was thrown into sin. The spirit of Satan or the spirit of iniquity entered man. All right. And this is now a, a man of sin. Okay. All right. Or a body of sin. Okay. And we refer to it as a body of sin because it sinned. Amen. And we were corrupt completely. Every facet of us, body, soul and spirit was affected in the fall all right my conscience okay because my my conscience is a faculty of the human spirit all right my conscience was taken captive the soul and the entire body now i use this body was used to express and live out all the sin and the corruption that had taken place in the fall. All right. And scripture also refers to this man as being in the what? In the flesh. Okay. In the flesh. In the flesh is just another way of saying a man that is void of the spirit of God. The spirit of God. Okay. So we were born this way. We were born alienated and cut off from God because people need to know, you know, why do I need saving? Why does God have all this preaching going for? Why do missionaries come? You know, I could be in the grocery store or on the street and they'll stop me and try to talk to me. Amen. Because of this right here, because men are sinners and Psalm 51 tells us that we were born in sin. And we were shaped in iniquity. So from my mother's womb, why? Because Adam's sin was what? Passed down. Adam's sin was passed down, okay, to us because Adam represented mankind. We were all in the loins of Adam, all right? We were in his loins. So when he sinned, we all sinned. That sin passed down and I was born in sin. In other words, I was born alienated, cut off from the life of God. The light of God was not shining in my inward parts. I was cut off from God. I was alienated from God. Okay. And that's key. So that's why men need to be born again. And, and some people don't believe that, but where's that scripture? Um, look real quick. Genesis. Is it Genesis? I believe it may be Genesis 6. Um, hmm. I want us to see something that God says here. Genesis 8 and 21. It says, uh, look at verse 20. And Noah Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For what? The imagination of man's what? Okay, where's the heart? inward the imagination of man's heart is what evil from where okay because see we we tend to think that children are so innocent okay but not when it comes okay to to god and salvation not when it comes to us being born in sin 
All right. So look what God says here. I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his what? Evil from his youth. All right. Does anyone in here remember sinning in your youth before you turned 18? <laughs> Amen. Before we turned 18, some of us at two, three, and four, you know, mom or dad would give us a command and we say no. Stop. You know, we fight back. They tell us to pick up our blocks and we don't. Okay. So he says, uh, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. Okay. So we must begin to see, we must see from what God's perspective. Okay, we must see as God sees. So he says now, so the imagination of man's youth is uh, evil from his youth. So now let's look here. Um, turn over, if you will, go to Acts, the 20th chapter. Go to Acts 20. <clears throat> Acts 20, and um, look at verse 21. Now, this is Paul meeting with the Ephesian elders, and um, look what he says here. He says, let me start at verse 19. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind. He's talking about, he's recounting to them uh, when God called him and what God called him for. So he says, um, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks repentance towards who okay repentance i'm sorry repentance toward god and faith toward our lord jesus christ okay repentance toward god okay so now if we're going to get into the kingdom i said remember the entry is repentance okay so we want to look at that today. Is that all right? Okay. Now God has said that he commands all men everywhere to repent. It was not a suggestion. That is a command. All right. So now I want us to, to, to look for a moment here. Now scripture tells us repentance is done toward God. Um, I want us to think about <clears throat> Um, remorse. Okay. Anybody know what remorse? Okay. Or, um, regret. Has anyone ever expressed regret? All right. Um, has anyone ever felt regret and felt really bad about something, a decision you made? All right which was not a good decision and you suffered consequences and it caused you a lot of hurt and you shed a lot of tears. All right. So my point is this regret and remorse. You can feel bad about something. Okay. I mean, really bad about something, but still not repent. Okay. You can feel bad, all right, because many times people think they equate feeling bad about something and shedding tears about something as repentance, okay? But I can remember, you know, when I was so-called seeking the Lord, there were many times that I cried, Okay, and felt bad about my sin, 
but still did not repent from my sin. Okay? So uh, biblical repentance. Remember, Paul said in the book of uh, Corinthians that godly sorrow, all right, leads you to repentance. <clears throat> okay? <clears throat> godly sorrow has that um, when your sorrow is God word, that is what leads you to repentance. Okay? Because repentance, godly repentance, okay, deals with what you have done to God. Not yourself. Because there, there, there are things that you can do, there are acts that you can commit, and or choices you can make that cause you suffering and you feel bad because you got hurt in the process okay that's still about you you can feel bad because now you got to pay the consequences for your actions all right but that doesn't mean you repented all right okay so when we look at Godly repentance, okay, godly repentance is always Godward. It's about what I have done to God, the sins I have committed against God, all right? That's the difference with godly repentance, okay, biblical sorrow. Paul talked about that, that sorrow that godly sorrow, because you can have a sorrow that's not godly, okay? You can be sorry for something because of how it has affected you or what you have lost, okay? And still not give a thought or a care about what God thinks about it. Do we, do we see that, okay? So, <clears throat> so our, we can't come up with our own definition of what it means to repent, okay? So now I want us to see this, repent. It's in your notes, okay? Repent, okay? Repent means to change my mind, to change the mind, okay? To change the mind. All right, for the purpose of now preparing the mind to think God's way. All right, you're repenting, all right, means I'm changing my mind, but the mind is going to be filled with something, okay? All right, so repent means <clears throat> to change the mind and begin thinking God's way, begin thinking God's way about situations, about things. Now, I want us to, I want to use this very um, practical example here today. Can we do that? <laughs> All right. Okay, so repent means to change the mind and begin thinking God's way. All right. And repent also means I take myself to God. All right. But I want us, I want us, I want to say something here. Um, seeking God is something we should be serious about. Seeking God is something you should be serious about. Chronicles tells us to set our heart to seek the Lord. Seeking God should be intentional. <clears throat> God's love and concern for us is intentional. All right? It's intentional. His plan of salvation was well thought out. He didn't just throw something together. <clears throat> he didn't just throw something together. God gave us his most prized thing, his son. Salvation should be a serious subject. Getting your soul right with God should be serious. That is a very serious matter because 
it has eternal consequences attached to it if you don't. Okay? So we need to be intentional about seeking God. So we must see repent, what, what, what repentance means, we must see that uh, from God's perspective. All right? Because if, if it's something he has told us to do, all right, then it's something I'm able to do. And I don't care how much sin you're in, you can repent. <clears throat> if you could not repent, God would not have told you to do so. And you know what? When you <clears throat> decide to repent, you don't have to go and get anybody else to help you do it. That's repentance is something you can do right in your own heart. In fact, it must be done with the heart. That's why God told us that the heart got to believe all the way to righteousness because God will not save if the heart is not in the right position. It's all determined by the heart. Your heart determines how God will deal with you. God says, I looked on a man's heart. All that outward stuff? No, because God knows the body is only doing what the heart tells it to do. Okay, so the soul, the heart is very important because it will determine how God will deal with us. So God said, now that heart got to go all that heart got to believe. You got to believe all the way to righteousness. So I want to look at a very practical. I want us to see repentance in a very practical example. Is that all right? Because I, 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 God deals with me in practicality and his word is practical. <clears throat> okay. So I want us to um, look at, I want to draw paint a scenario here <laughs> just to show uh, repentance, how we repent, okay? Because repent means to change the mind, okay? Okay, change the mind and to begin to think God's way because our heart is full of stuff, okay? What is it full of? Full of us. How we feel. What we want. How we like it. What we want to do. What we don't want to do. How far we'll go. How far we won't go. We are full of us. Okay? All right? So God has said in, in St. Matthew, the fifth chapter, he told us that um, blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay. Poor in spirit. Look what he says here. Blessed are the poor. Where though? What has to be poor? What has to be poor? Blessed are the poor in spirit. So what, where is God directing us? He's directing us inward. Okay. Where the real issue lies. Okay, he's directing us inward. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Okay, for theirs is what? Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, that's the one I'll save. All right, blessed are the poor in spirit. What is poor in spirit? See, see, when we're full of self, we're full of our own pride, our own arrogance, all right? And some of us are, are so arrogant until we think we know everything. You know, and, and we, 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 we feel we can tell God how our life should, should go. Amen? I know I was there. We think we know better than God, all right? So God says there has to be a depletion, and it's got to be in your human spirit. It's got to be in that heart, that soul, poor in spirit. When you think of a poor person, what do you think of? What comes to mind when you think of poor? Lack? Hmm? 
don't have anything, okay, in need. A poor person is dependent.